Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing some wildlife. This is my charcoal drawing of a lioness. And before I get on with the drawing process, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel and also give me a like and comment on my videos. Now we're going to see how I did it. First I'm going to talk about the general things, the uh, materials and the composition. I'm working on uh, 200 GSM smooth drawing paper. The size is about 9 times 12 inches. The composition is going to be fairly simple. A large portrait of an animal in the middle of the paper. That's about it. Um, the, the materials are mostly going to be drawing with coin or charcoal pencils. And in addition to them, I'm also going to be using vine charcoal, some charcoal powder and some erasing and blending tools which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. The sketch is done as you can see and now I'm moving on uh, with the shading of the background. I'm going to do this first with a piece of vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is soft natural charcoal it's uh, easier to move around than compressed charcoal from your charcoal pencils and I can use it to cover this large area very quickly and because it's so easy to manipulate I can later modify the amount of value I need in that area um, I can use that uh, dust, that charcoal dust lying around, I can move that around and I can create some tonal variations just to create some uh, suggestions of some shapes in the background but it's going to be blurry and dark I don't want to show anything specific I just want to have some kind of a background that will provide me with enough contrast so that the main subject would stand out. Now once I blended this uh, a bit with my fingers and with a brush. I'm going to add some uh, darker charcoal to that and I created this charcoal by sharpening one of my charcoal pencils. Uh, so this material is a little bit darker and it sticks to the paper a little bit more than vine charcoal. So in that sense it's a bit more permanent and it's a little bit more difficult to erase but when you put it on top of vine charcoal it's also a little bit easier to move around and to manipulate in terms of the amount of value you want to create in different parts of your drawing. So as you can see I'm trying to create some uh, suggestions of some blurry shapes in the background like a bokeh type of background with nothing specific there but the main purpose of this background is to provide contrast with the lighter parts of the lioness's head. And one of the mo most important uh, things here will be uh, not to leave uh, a lighter area around the animal's head. Because what you want to avoid is that glowing halo effect around your main subject. You want to try to create a clean edge so that you could have a sharp contrast where the background ends and your subject begins. And that's why I had to push the charcoal all the way to the edge of my sketch and maybe even a little bit over uh, the edge of the outline that I drew because I want to make sure that I pushed in the charcoal all, all the way to the edge and that I won't end up with that glowing effect around the edge of my subject. So it's very important for me to avoid that if I want to create a realistic looking drawing where the main subject stands out or pops out because of the strong contrast with the background. And now I'm going to start working around the outline or the outer edge of my main subject and I'm going to do that with a with a pencil eraser. This is a Kohinoor eraser and a pencil and I'm using it to draw some suggestions of short hairs around the 
around the animal's uh, ears. So the lioness has uh, very large ears and it has some short hair on them but on the inside part, uh, on the inside of the ear there are some longer fluffier hairs. I'm going to get to those later but right now as you can see I was working on that outer edge because I wanted to clean up the or rather define the edge between uh, that left side of my main subject and the background. Now, now I'm putting in some darker uh, values, some areas of darker value on the inside uh, area of this ear and uh, I'm dabbing I'm dabbing those darker areas to make sure that I've pushed in the charcoal because when you use your finger as a blending tool um, the finger, the texture of your skin and the natural oils from your skin tend to uh, push the charcoal into the grain of the paper and make it stick so uh, your, your fingers actually allow you to create some very dark areas while blending whereas some of the some of the other blending tools don't really produce that effect because when you move the charcoal around with brushes or tutilians they sometimes tend to make the area a little bit lighter than you want it so once I establish this darker area I'm later going to draw some highlights or some lighter hairs in front of it or on top of it but there's no need for me to do that just now right now I've achieved a sort of a look of fluffy fur and I'm going to add some details to it a bit later. You can see that uh, it's already starting to have some depth. You can feel uh, like there's an opening there, there's a cavity there, and uh, that, uh, that the hair which is closer to the rim of the ear is a little bit lighter. So I'm moving on to some other parts of the animal's head and um, there are different ways you can approach drawing a portrait whether it is a human portrait or, or a portrait of an animal you can start from details or you can start from larger general things one of the things that many artists often recommend is to establish a contrast between larger areas first to establish those larger relationships first and that can be useful but sometimes it can also be useful to define some of the main details or some of the uh, most important bits first. One of the things I like to do is I like to define some of the darker areas first and then go on with the larger shading. Another thing that I also like to do is I like to do a little bit of work on the eyes or the ears because these are just some parts of the uh, drawing which are interesting to me and they help me kind of get that feeling of uh, progress uh, making some progress while I'm uh, while I'm doing the drawing and they provide a bit of encouragement and they allow me to break the monotony a little bit but one of the things that I'll have to do soon is I'll have to shade those larger areas in order to define the contrast between the light side of my subject and the shadow side. But here I started working on that ear, on that eye rather, after I finished the ear. And as you can see I defined some of the darker details and I shaded the eyeball as well. So around the tear duct and around the eye there are some darker areas, areas of darker value. I put those in using my charcoal pencil and now I'm going to do uh, something similar with the other eye and of course another uh, large dark area is the nose with these large nostrils and the skin around the nose uh, around the nostrils is also a bit darker but not quite as dark as the nostrils obviously even when you're drawing these darker areas you still need to try to retain the range of value so that the viewer can discern or differentiate between uh, the darker areas and areas which are pitch black in this case uh, the pupils, the inside of the ear and the nostrils there almost pitch black 
So now I grabbed a piece of vine charcoal and now I'm just going to use it to shade these larger areas, basically establishing the larger relationships between the lighter and darker portions of the lioness's head. And this is very important because it will help me with the shading and texturing because it, it can be very very difficult to, to work on the texture if you haven't established the larger shadows first. And here as you can see <coughs> the shadow is on the left side which means that the light source is coming more from the right. Of course it's always always coming from above or it's almost always coming from above so the upper portion of the head is going to be lighter uh, but it's also the light source is also going to be casting a shadow to the left because it's coming from the right so uh, this stage looks a little bit ugly obviously and uh, it may be a little bit discouraging uh, for some of the less patient artists but it is a necessary stage because in this stage as you can see I've established that shadow area and once I start working on the texture of the fur it's going to be a lot easier for me because I will have that contrast and it is this contrast or these larger relationships that show the volume of the head and the general shape of the head because if you fail uh, to capture those larger relationships um, your main subject will still end up looking flat no matter how much work you put in, uh, in into the texture. You can draw a realistic looking fur but if you fail to capture the, uh, the larger shadow areas, if you fail to explain to the viewer what the overall shape of the head is, uh, your drawing will not be good. So it was a necessary stage even though at one point it will look a little bit ugly but there's no need to worry about that because I'm going to be working over it adding a lot of texture, adding a lot of these smaller hairs and defining a lot of the smaller details a little bit later now I have to tell you as I'm working on the texture of the fur now this process can be a little bit tedious so I'm going to speed up some parts of it and uh, I'm just going to explain uh, some of the important things that you have to pay attention to. So when you're drawing fur, and I often talked about this when drawing animals, but there are a couple of things to remember. Uh, you need to make sure that you're pulling your strokes in the direction of the fur. So you need to follow the direction of the fur in your reference photo so that the, the direction of your strokes matches the general direction of the fur the way that the hair on the animal body grows and another thing that you have to keep in mind is the length of the fur because the length of the fur the length of the hair that, that covers the animal's body varies considerably depending on the body part so in some areas like for example around the around the nose and uh, around the forehead area you'll see that the uh, fur is very short and when you draw it you can almost draw it using very short strokes or dots or almost creating a dot like uh, texture but as you move further away from those areas you will see that the fur gets longer and longer for example around the ears, then around the cheek and the jaw and then of course uh, around the neck and the body the hair gets a little bit longer now the lioness uh, as an animal it, it doesn't really have very long fur as some other animals the fur is generally pretty short uh, nevertheless the length of the fur does still vary to a certain degree and you have to take that into account because if you pull all of your strokes uh, ignoring the length of the fur you will not end up with a realistic looking animal you will end up with a crappy looking fur coat and uh, that won't be good it's the same thing if you don't pay attention to the direction of the fur 
you're not going to produce a very realistic looking effect. So as you can see, uh, the, uh, the head is casting a shadow onto the neck here and there's a sharp transition between that shadow area and the lighter portion of the neck. And uh, I want to keep that contrast because I'd, I think it helps me uh, suggest the volume and depth in my drawing. If you have these larger shadows in your reference photos, that's always a good thing because it can help you convey that uh, shape to the viewer more easily. You don't want your main subject to look flat. And you, you don't want your drawing to look flat. So as I'm moving down to this area in between the eyes, I'm uh, doing the same thing that I did uh, with the forehead area. I'm just drawing a lot of these short hairs. And um, I'm going to try to refine the appearance of that fur using a combination of these short pencil strokes, but also some blending tools and, of course, erasers. I'm going to be using erasers to draw some highlights on top of that work I already did. And um, one of the things that I have to tell you about uh, brushes, uh, because you can see me using brushes here a lot when I'm drawing fur, uh, about brushes as blending tools. They can be very useful uh, when drawing fur because when you blend your strokes with a brush, they tend to soften those strokes and make the fur look a little bit more realistic and they make the, the hair look more dense because you can't draw every single hair, you know. I mean, you can, but it would be very, very time-consuming. Uh, but because you can't really draw every single hair, uh, when you pull these short strokes and you go over them with a brush, uh, that makes them look more dense and it makes the fur look a little bit softer and more realistic. And another advantage of brushes is that uh, it doesn't, they don't really remove that texture completely. They just soften it a little bit, they blend it a little bit, they make it a little bit darker. Uh, it really depends on how much pressure you're using and how many times you go over the area that you're blending. But you're mostly able to retain some of the texture that you worked hard to create. Now this is not the case with tortillions. With tortillions you have to be a little bit more careful because when you start blending with tortillions, if you, if you use these longer strokes uh, like I use with brushes, I would destroy that texture. That texture would disappear. And that's not good because I want to show a realistic looking texture of the fur. So brushes are good for that. But tortillions can also be good because they can help you create some uh, smaller marks, smaller strokes that are not as dark or as well defined in terms of edges as the as the pencil strokes. So a tortillion with some charcoal on it can be a very useful drawing tool as well as a blending tool. And now I'm uh, moving on to this ear area and I have to make this a little bit more complex. I have to add some hair And I have to try to kind of layer that hair to make it, make it look more three-dimensional. So I'm going to be drawing, I'm going to be pulling these strokes one in front of the other, one over the other, to create that uh, look of dense overlapping hair. But I don't want those uh, strokes to be too clean because I, uh, I want that fur here on the inside of the ear to look really soft and fluffy. Uh, now, as for erasing charcoal, either with these uh, with these pencil erasers or kneaded erasers, charcoal does erase pretty well, but it doesn't erase quite as well as graphite, I'm going to tell you. And this is especially the case if you've pushed it in uh, with your blending tools. So it depends also on the way you've applied charcoal to the surface of the paper. But it can be erased, and you can especially get some nice looking white lines or lighter lines when you have uh, a darker background to work with. So, as usual, it all depends on the contrast. If you've established a slightly darker background, when you pull your hi highlights with an eraser, they will show up against a darker background a little bit better. And uh, my pencil eraser is getting a bit short, as you can see. 
I have another one uh, which is a Faber Castell one but I think that that one is a little bit ha harder than this one <coughs> so I prefer this Kohinoor one even though they will both get the job done I guess you can do the same thing with a kneaded eraser it just the uh, uh, this is a little bit more convenient because uh, with a kneaded eraser you have to keep uh, reshaping it and remolding it now one of the advantages of a kneaded eraser is, is that it just lifts up the charcoal because one of the things that can happen while you're doing this is that uh, by rubbing the surface of the paper you can actually push in some of the charcoal and it can be difficult to remove it so it's a sort of a double-edged sword but uh, I also like this uh, I also like these uh, shadows around the around the cheeks there is a nice transition between the light area and the shadow area and now I'm uh, doing a little bit more of the background on the right side because I'm right-handed I normally work from left to right and because charcoal is messy to work with normally uh, you want to you want to prevent smudging and you want to work in a certain order for right-handed people it's normally from left to right and from top to bottom but sometimes it's also easier for me to do a bit more of the background so that I can start creating that contrast between the main subject and the background and so that I can start creating that clean edge but also at the same time so that I could gauge the amount of value I need in that part of the drawing this area the nose area will be uh, kinda tricky because uh, there is a lot of short hair, very short fur there so that will require a lot of patience notice how much longer the hair is around the around the eyes, above the eyes especially uh, the hair looks like eyebrows but here on the nose it's way shorter so I'm trying to produce a texture that almost looks like dots so it's almost like I'm poking at the, at the paper or making very very short strokes and even though I sped this up a little bit I, uh, I didn't play all of it in real time you can imagine that in real time uh, this is a process that takes a lot of patience one of the things that can help a little bit once you uh, establish some sort of a texture is you can actually drag your pencil a little bit uh, and just allow it to produce some random small texture and uh, that will also create an illusion of short here one of the tricks that I'm using now is I'm dabbing on some of the lighter areas uh, with a kneaded eraser and that uh, that can actually make some areas a little bit lighter without removing the texture so you just dab a little bit and the texture is still there but you just lift up a little bit of that value and just create an area of slightly lighter value I found this technique useful so that I could emphasize the contrast between the lighter uh, parts of the of the animal's head and the, the shadow parts now as I'm going over these small strokes small marks that I created with a brush uh, I, uh, I'm getting an area of darker value because I'm pushing that charcoal around but the texture is still there so this is one of the things that I kept saying about how you need to try to use the advantages of all of your blending tools and one of the advantages of brushes is that they allow you to preserve the texture even though they soften the marks and they uh, make the fur look a little bit darker and a little bit more dense at the same time uh, 
the texture is still there so I didn't waste my time by making making that uh, short uh, short fur short looking texture of the or short short fur and I'm going to go over that with a pencil eraser once again to try to create some highlights and after that of course I'm going lower down working working my ma my way down working on the background and uh, doing a little bit more of the background so this uh, this right side is a little bit lighter because of the light source and there's going to be a nice contrast between the head uh, that right side of the head and the background I'm just adding a few touches here and there to that short fur uh, where I felt that it needed to be a little bit darker and I'm also adding a few strokes with a pencil eraser here and there to make the fur look a bit more realistic when you're doing a drawing like this you don't have to go into such details but the thing is that because of the size of the drawing I felt compelled to do a more detailed drawing if that makes sense if I were doing a slightly smaller portrait of a lioness maybe I could simplify the texture a little bit and focus only on the larger shadows and the larger contrasts but because the the head is covering pretty much most of the paper and it's such a large drawing I felt that I needed to put in more detail I'm drawing these darker patches of uh, darker spots of uh, on this uh, muzzle area or a snout area rather um, this is where some of the lighter hairs will be growing out of but even though this uh, part of even though this part of the head is covered with lighter fur I need to shade the left side because it's in the shadow it's facing away from the light source because if I don't do that I'm not going to be able to show the uh, the actual shape of the uh, of the animal's uh, snout and of the animal's jaw so it's always important to keep in mind uh, the effect that darker and lighter values have on the shapes that you're trying to create so here I'm trying to pull some of these whiskers to draw some of these whiskers using a pencil eraser some people like to use a combination of white and black charcoal I whenever I work in charcoal I tend to prefer I tend to prefer erasing either erasing or reserving the white space when, when I can but here with whiskers you can't really reserve the white space you can't really work around them because they're so small and you have to shade the darker areas first so I have to erase them and I don't have to make them completely white because they're also in the shadow side on the shadow side of the animal so uh, I'm not too worried about if they will show up too much um, after all just a few suggestions here and there create that illusion of realism now I made this portion of the fur here under the nose a bit too dark uh, but I did that deliberately because I wanted these highlights to show up so now I'm using my pencil eraser again pulling some shorter uh, lighter fur creating some uh, lighter marks and occasionally doing a, a bit of dabbing with a kneaded eraser so I'm using a combination of these two erasers uh, so that I could produce the desired effect 
uh, this is a bit of a back and forth process because sometimes you will you won't like the texture created and you will want to re rework it a little bit by going over it with a brush or even a pencil and then going back with an eraser to try to create a better looking texture because there were uh, times when I felt like I was creating maybe um, either an ugly looking texture or a texture of a fur that appears slightly longer than I wanted it to be so if you're trying to make it look like the animal you're drawing you have to make sure that the fur matches the length of the fur of the animal. Here I did the uh, uh, this chin area or the lower jaw area where there is a bit of a lighter and longer hair and uh, I have to cover a little bit more of it with charcoal so that I could create contrast so I'm going to be drawing some of these longer lighter hairs in if I want them to stand out I have to cover a little bit more of that of that jaw area with some charcoal first and I'm also adding some indications of darker area in between those hairs to give them a little bit more depth to give that uh, area of fur a little bit more depth and once I do that I'm going to start working with uh, with a pencil eraser this jaw area now looks too small but once I uh, once I go over it with a pencil eraser it's going to look a bit better so the lioness and I mean many cats in general have a little bit of uh, slightly longer lighter fur uh, on that part of the head it almost looks like a goatee so you can see now it looks a little bit bigger and the fur also looks a little bit more realistic and this is an area of lighter hair but and it's kind of sticking outward so it's going to be catching more light but I still need to try to make sure that my left side is at least a little bit darker than the right one than the light side and I also pulled some whiskers I, I drew some whiskers on the right side as well and you know sometimes you can use a pencil to work around those lighter hairs to work around uh, things like whiskers and uh, lighter hair lighter uh, mustache things like that but it will usually not produce a very good effect there are exceptions to everything I mean sometimes you can work around them a little bit but you should try to avoid that technique it's better to use it uh, it's better to use an eraser it produces a much better looking effect so I'm adding a bit of texture and a bit more value to this light side of the head on the right because I can't leave it completely white all I have left to do is this uh, lower part of the portrait so the neck and the chest area and I need to finish a little bit more of this background and then we have that nice shadow which is coming from the head the head is casting a shadow onto the neck and the part of the chest area but before I do that I'm drawing a little bit of texture of the fur on that uh, neck and uh, chest and shoulder area I guess and I'm doing that with a combination of an eraser and a uh, tortillion I'm using a tortillion for a lighter fur where I don't want to use uh, marks uh, where I don't want to create marks with a pencil because those will be a, a little bit too dark and a little bit too defined in terms of edges so when I want something slightly softer I use a uh, tortillion I also need to make sure that I have a sufficient enough, uh, su sufficient amount of shadow uh, under that jaw area because that area where the head joins the neck or where the head transitions into the neck that area needs to be a little bit darker and uh, also not only because it's a different body part but because, uh, because of the folds in the skin and the fur 
So I softened everything with a brush a little bit and uh, I'm going around that jaw area adding a bit more shadow and uh, trying to refine the appearance of the fur on the body and now I'm going to try to define this uh, shadow a bit better I'm going to use that with the vine charcoal and go over it with a brush because that way I'm hoping that I won't uh, ruin all of the texture that I created I will soften it a little bit and I don't really mind that the texture will be softer and less defined in that part of my drawing uh, for a simple reason the the fur is a little bit longer here so you notice that I pulled much longer strokes in that part of the body um, I've already explained how you need to try to match the length of your strokes to the length of the fur in that part of the body that you're trying. <clears throat> and now I'm just uh, refining the texture in that area a little bit and putting down some of the finishing touches. I'm going to put my signature in the lower right corner and I drew my signature with a pencil eraser. So the portrait is done, the drawing of the lioness is done. Um, I hope you like it. If you want to see longer videos, full length videos, you should check out my Patreon. I'm just going to fix a few things here. I feel like this white area is a little bit too large. Uh, but now I think uh, once I do that I'm really done don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to check out my other videos don't forget to give me a like and comment on my videos I hope you enjoyed this charcoal drawing of a lioness I hope you found it useful or entertaining I'm going to see you in the next one bye for now